Good afternoon. Good afternoon off the bench prep news family. How's everyone day going? I hope it's magnificent. Um, today we're doing something new. Generally, we have not did interviews with guys this young, but when a, when a, a young man has had the success in academics and athletics that this young man has had, we look to try to promote him or promote them to give them a bit of exposure a little bit earlier. You know, we try to show love to everyone because that's just what we do here at Prep News. Uh, in, in the process of this, we're always talking about how kids should be multi-sport athletes. Well, today we have one. He he plays football. He plays basketball. He super excels at track and field. And he's also played baseball. Please welcome Prep News family um, to our house, into our home. Uh, Jace Jones, St. Amant Middle Athletics and Future Track Club. What's up, Jace? Welcome. Thank you for um, welcoming me onto this very nice interview. No doubt. We don't know if it's nice yet, but we're going to try to make it nice and beautiful just for you because you deserve it. Um, Thank you. So we're, we're going to go into academics. Uh, we're going to start there. What What's this school year been like for you and what, what type of grades do you get at the end of the nine weeks? Well, this school year has been very fun because it's my I'm in the seventh grade. And it's my first year ever being able to play sports in middle school. So I enjoyed it. First for football, we had one parish champs. I like to thank my team for that. And then second, uh I went to basketball season. That was very fun and new. I got I had played against people that was way bigger than me, but sometimes you can't be scared to go against somebody that's bigger and stronger than you. And then right after that we went into track season which I did very good in. And then I just took, and after that, I just focused on school and made my grades right so I can go to the eighth grade. Right, what type of letter grades do you pick? A's, B's, or C's, or? A's and B's. Do you can't, get flags? I can't make no flags. Parents you, will you, don't, you don't get the American flag? You don't like that? I can't do that. My parents will be mad at me. Your parents being mad at you mean something? No, I just, I hate when my parents are devastated at me when I could, when I know I could do better. So your parents being mad at you does mean something. Yes, sir. Okay. So are you, are you being smart because it's what you need to do or because you don't want your parents mad at you? It's what I need to do. Cause in order to, in order to succeed, I gotta be smart. And then after that, I get to go to college, which I still have to be smart in to finish and to see after that. Okay. Okay. I can live with that response. Where, where'd you get started in sports and how old were you when you started? Well, actually I first started when I was about five years old, I started off with soccer. I used to love, so I used to just love running and scoring goals. And then right after that, I had moved to Louisiana and I started I, I got introduced to Eastside Raiders football in Gazaz, Louisiana, where I met something new where where you couldn't be scared unless you sit and you just have fun and play out there and you learn new things. Man, I, I heard something really interesting um, recently about you, and that was that you can do Coach Hobart impersonations. Uh, let me hear one, man. Well, the thing, I can't really do it because the thing about Coach Hover, he does a lot of cursing and I can't really <laughs> do that out here. So you can't do it without the cursing? Nah, I can't because that's, that's one of the key features into his impersonations. What if we give you a pass this time? Mm -mm. Come on, just, give me one, just give me one Coach Hover impersonation. I, I've heard so much about them. Like, you know, we don't promote youth and, and profanity, but 
They say your Coach Hobart impersonations are to die for. Well, first, like, first he would be a calm at first, and he made that one that one mistake. <laughs> He's that. Is he? Was he a tough coach? Yes, but he made me way better and made way me not scared. He, the one thing he always said was, "Bigger doesn't mean better. Bigger just means bigger." Wow, you was even listening to him. Yeah, how, how was he? I'll be on the bench. I, 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 <laughs> Right. How, 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 how many other sayings did he say? Give me one more. Oh, I think he also said, "Listen, listening is a key feature into life." I think that's another one he said too. Uh, well, just talk to me like I'm not Coach Hobart, but it's okay. Uh, what did you learn as a young football player about yourself? I learned that. You don't have to always stick to one position, and like you can always be better. You like once you master one position, you can master another one, and another one to you, you can master all the positions. Okay, what would you would you end up uh, doing next in youth athletics? Well, right after football, I went into GYBL because that is youth basketball league at Gonzalez Middle, and I started playing basketball at the age of about seven years old. Okay, so so now you're playing football and basketball uh, along with your academics. What what kind of challenge was all that for you now, now that you're playing sports over half the year? Well, the challenge really for me was the homework part because I'm a good test taker and I, I catch on to things quick. But the problems I had was homework after in the school because if I have the football practice or basketball practice, I'll be very tired. I just want to take a shower, eat, and go to sleep. Does that – I'm not going to even ask you that. I'm not going to play with you. Uh, how'd you get into track? How'd you start running track? Well, for, I started with baseball, and then after a year later, my my sister wanted to run track, and it'll, it'll be hard for me to get my, my parents for me to get to track and to uh, baseball at the same time. So I just went with my sister and ran track. And then after my first year, I just started loving track because I got my speed up and I was doing, since I got my speed up, I was doing better at football. Okay. How did you excel so fast? And excel means get to a place where you were better than others so fast in a sport that you were just introduced to what what helped you become better well i had some very excellent coaches that helped me out coach don coach dante perkins he he helped me majorly he pushed me made me work hard even though the days i was sore he still pushed me to uh succeed what what's what's been the thing that you've done best in track the thing i have done best in is uh javelin throwing i'm number one in the region and i'm number 23rd in the nation in javelin man stop playing for real you, you, you mean the region right i'm number one in region and i'm number 23rd in the nation javelin is not a traditional sport so i won't I'm just, you know, I'm not a rocket scientist, nor did I stay at a Holiday Inn last night where you get, it ain't Hilton rest, but it's good rest. Uh, so you, you took a non-traditional sport and you made it your own because you, you have to be really good at form and technique to be a, a great javelinist. How'd you get to be number one so fast um, in, in in that sport? Well, I just, after I first started, I just started practicing and practicing because after every track meet, I came home with a medal and I, I just started getting hungry for more medals and more. <laughs> I started training and training. And my dad, my mom helped me out by going out to EA field and just throwing and throwing and throwing until my arm got tired. Bro, you are so funny. So you 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 got hungrier and hungrier 
for more medals. How, how many events have you won in Japan? I lost count. It's a, it's a whole bunch. Almost, mo almost most of my track meets, I came home with a, either a first, second, or first or second place medal. You you said earlier that you do other events in track and field. What what other events do you do? Well, first of all, I do the hundred meter dash, one of the fastest races in track and field. I do very good in that. It's just that I prefer to run a 200 because I, I got to gain my speed up. I'm not a very fast starter. I got I catch people because I'm very tall and lengthy. Okay. You 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 killed my next question, but I'm not going to hold that against you. I'm not going to hold that against you. There, there have been people such as Bo Jackson, Deion Sanders, um, a couple other guys that I'm, you know, it's been a few guys that have played professionally as athletes in multiple sports. Is that something that you would like to be able to do as you grow older, you know, and you keep excelling in multiple sports as a professional athlete? Is that something that you may be looking to do? Yes, yeah, sir, because some people like a certain sport more than the other one, but I like all my sports equally. And plus, they're in different seasons, so I'll be able to play football. And after right after football, I get a guess a couple of days off. And I go right into basketball. And after basketball season, I go right into track season. It's just a cycle and cycle. I could just stay in shape and keep us succeeding in all those three sports. As a, a, as a young guy that's about to go to eighth grade right now, eighth graders are the leaders in in their schools. As far as athletics go, coaches put a little more, little more pressure, a little more uh, bigger leadership role on them, as in making sure that they do things right, so that the younger kids that are watching, who may not be ready to get on the football field yet, or who may not have the skill set or the confidence or the talent or shooting ability on the basketball court to lead and be ready to play right now. How do you, as a guy that's been excelling in all the sports you play, how do you lead a young group of kids in your peer group? The way you can lead them is by encouraging, saying that you don't got to be like everybody else because everybody else is different, no matter in skin color, skill, height, or whatever. You don't got to be like everybody else. Just do the best you can and do the thing that you love. You you, you said that you got hungrier um, at, in track and field, the more and more medals you won. This past season, you got to play a, a good bit as a seventh grader in football, which in your area is really unheard of. Do you have that same passion to win a Paris championship for eighth grade? If so, what are some of the things that you have to do to ensure that you guys are in the same boat again at the end of the football come end of the football season that's so close to being here again? Well, first you got you gotta start off with teamwork because without teamwork, you won't be a team and you won't be on the same page. Second of all, we gotta work hard and be in shape because you play 40 minutes straight back to back without getting on the field. So you got to be in shape. And third of all, we got to be strong as a team together. And we all have different abilities that can, that can make us win. In my mind, I'm saying I want to hear another Coach Holbert um, impersonation. Let's see. What's another one? I think I, I think I might got another one. Another <laughs> one is. Oh, let's see. Let's see. Let's think. Let's think. Let's think. Let's think. What's another funny one that Uncle Hobart does? Oh, so, so when you get injured, like you, while while I was younger, I had got injured once. Like I was running, I was doing a whole bunch of spinning and stuff instead of running the ball, 
and I got hit real bad. And then the thing Coach Hoa does, he goes over there, he grabs you by your jersey, he says, Did it? <laughs> he just grab he just grabbed you by your jersey and just lifted you up and tell you stop crying before you go into the stands with your mama. Coach Hobart is really embarrassed right now. I did not know I was that tough. I did not know I was that tough. I may cry when I get off screen now. <laughs> no, hey, hey, so you, you got uh, 500 calf raises uh, for doing Coach Hobart impersonations behind my back. Uh, I'm going to make sure I get all 500 of them. Uh, Man, great job. Really proud, not for the impersonations, but great job for knowing who you are as a young athlete. Great job for knowing where you want to go and how you see yourself. And great job of knowing how to lead from the front and not from the rear. Uh, we want to thank you again, Jace Jones, for coming on to prep news. Um, I'm, I'm sure you'll be back a few more times. Uh, continue to grow, continue to stay diligent in the classroom because that's where everything begins and ends. No coach, no matter how much they like you as an a, a athlete, if you don't do the first part, which is? First part is listening. No, student. Student, oh yes. You sure. don't do the student part, no matter how much a coach wants to offer you a scholarship, he can't if you're not academically prepared. So stay stay diligent, stay on the grind, um, doing the little things in the classroom, and stay. You, you obviously work a lot on skill development. Keep that up. Uh, we're proud of you. Thank you. Remember, get off the bench. Get into the game.